uh, the last thing that we're going to be thinking about in vectors is to find the shortest distances between various things that we've got. So far we've done angles between them, intersections, and then the last thing we do is shortest distances. And then there's a little bit you may have seen that was to do with reflecting lines and things, but that's nothing, uh, that's more just like applying some of this knowledge that we've got here. So I have got some different scenarios here that I'm trying to represent with some of uh, these diagrams. First of all, this diagram that I've got up here is meant to be a representation of the shortest distance between two parallel lines. It is going to be the same distance, but we need to be able to find out what is this distance between these two lines here. Okay. Now, I could have measured the distance like this, but that wouldn't be the shortest distance, would it? What do you notice about the distance being the shortest between two parallel lines? It's, perpendicular. it's what's perpendicular? Uh, the, shortest the shortest distance is perpendicular the to the direction of the line. So this is perpendicular. So this one's going to be the shortest distance. This one is not going to be the shortest distance. Per perpendicular means that things are going to be the shortest distance possible. What do you think this one here is trying to represent the shortest distance of? Line, line, and, a point. line and a point. So this is a line and a point, and the shortest distance, well I could go from here, over here, that would be a distance between the point and the line, but I want the shortest distance, so not that that's been particularly perpendicular, but it should be perpendicular, so I'm going to redraw this a little bit more carefully. So I want that to be my shortest distance, not this one, okay? Um, this one here, I'll come to this one in a second, what do I want this one to represent, do you think? Uh, yep, yeah, I was writing a, a plane and a line, but it's actually a plane and a point. bit harder to visualise this one, but I want the distance to go straight down, again, so that it is perpendicular to the plane. A normal to the plane, yeah, it's going to be in that direction of the normal. Because you could measure it from here over here, but clearly that's not going to be the shortest distance that we have. So we're only looking for these uh, perpendicular ones. This one down here is representing the shortest distance between a plane and a plane. So there's going to be a point on this plane, and it's going to go shwoom, straight down, and it's going to be the shortest distance to the plane down here. That line I've drawn is actually kind of in underneath the blue plane that we've got there. So we're looking for the shortest distance again, which is perpendicular here. So okay. Uh, they would have to be parallel. Why would they have to be parallel? Otherwise they, intersect. Otherwise they would intersect, and the shortest distance between them is yeah, zero. Right. Pardon? Yeah, so the I should have said plane and plane, which are parallel. They have, to. they have to be parallel to find the shortest distance between them. Otherwise, they would intersect, and therefore the shortest distance would be zero. Um, so I'm actually just going to erase a couple of these lines. I'm going to get rid of the ones that aren't the shortest distance. Um, so I don't want that. And, that. and what did you say these ones at the top are? Skew, skew lines, yes. So this is the shortest distance between two skew lines. Remember how I described the skew lines as like lasers, okay? And this is a really interesting one because these, these are meant to represent these two lasers, these red and the, uh, the blue line that we've got there. And this green line is a distance between them, a distance between them but it's not the shortest distance. The one that is the shortest distance between them is perpendicular to the blue line and perpendicular to the red line. And you can kind of think about that. If you imagine these kind of two lasers crossing over, the shortest distance is going to be that point where they're kind of like hovering near each other, and it actually ends up as being perpendicular to both of them at the same time. Um, all of these, you'll notice the theme is perpendicular. And perpendicular should make you think of some things when we're talking about vectors. What does it make you think of? The dot product is zero. That is the magic trick for every single one of these questions, and they are basically all the same. Actually, no, these two are, these two are kind of like themed together. These three are themed together. Okay, these are all to do with dot products. This one is to do with a formula that just saves us a lot of time. Okay, so we're going to do these one at a time. Um, I think we'll probably do these three and then we'll do a bit of practice, and then we'll do these two, um, and then you can do some practice on those ones for homework because they're quite straightforward. So I'm going to try and do these three all together now. Okay, we're going to start off by finding the shortest distance between two parallel lines. 
Now, the strategy for doing this is we start off by finding a general point on L1, which means there's either going to be a lambda or a mu in there. So the general point could be here, it could be here, it could be here, it could be anywhere on that first line, L1. Then I find a general point on L2. Well, that could be here, it could be here, it could be here. It could be on any of those places. You then find a vector between them. Well, that vector that could be between them could be from this general point to this general point, or it could be from this general point to this general point. It could be any of those ones. But what we then want to find is ensure that this vector is perpendicular to both of the lines. So rather than this one, because that's not perpendicular to both of them, I'm going to want to eventually find out this vector here, which is perpendicular. I've said to both lines, but it really only needs to be perpendicular to one of them. Why does it only need to be perpendicular to one of them? Because they're parallel, right? So if it's, if it's perpendicular to one, it's going to be perpendicular to the other. So the things I need to know about in this is a general point in L1, general point on L2. I need to know the direction of the line, and I need to ensure that when I, um, when I take the dot product, it will be perpendicular to them. And I think it will make a lot more sense when we see these things in, pa in practice. So um, this line that I've got here, and I've got this line here, I'm going to try and show that this is the shortest distance between these two parallel lines. So for this first one, I have that r equals 1, 2, minus 1, plus 5 lambda, plus 4 lambda, plus 3 lambda. And this is... is this no, 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 you're going to keep it general. This is a general point on L1. Because it's got lambda, it could be anywhere at all on the line. You remember when I put all these dots on the line? Yeah. That means it could be any of them. Now what I'm going to do is the same thing. I'm going to find out a general point, which is on L2. So I've got 2, 0, 1, because there's no J component there, plus 5 mu, plus 4 mu. I probably didn't need the 0 there, really, did I? And plus 3 mu. So why don't I get rid of my 0 here? And this is a general point on L2. If you wanted to, you could call this general point, you could call it the position vector A, if you want to, just to give it a name. And you could call this one here B. So we're actually saying these coordinates here, these are examples of what A could be, and these are examples of what B could be. And we want to find out what's the value that's going to give us that kind of thing there. Now I want to try and find a vector that goes between them. How do I find the vector from here to here, or from here to here, or from here to here? I do B minus A, so I want the vector between them Sorry, this one we've said is, that's going to be A, that's going to be B. So we're now going to try and find out what AB is, okay? AB will be B minus A. So I'm going to find out the vector between them, which is B minus A. So it's going to be this one. Minus this one. And you're going to have to make sure you do the subtracting really carefully. So you get minus 1, minus 5 lambda, minus 2, minus 4 lambda, but plus 1, minus 3 lambda. And so that simplifies to 2 minus 1 is 1. So it's 1 plus 5 mu, minus 5 lambda. Then I get, whoops, minus 2 plus 4 mu minus 4 lambda. And then I get 2 plus 3 mu minus 3 lambda. What do you notice about these bits over here?
yeah, the amount of mews you're taking away and the amount of lambdas are the same in all of them. Why has that happened? Because they're parallel to each other, okay? So this is kind of annoying because we've got too many variables here. So what we do is we let a new variable t equal mu minus lambda. We do that just to kind of simplify the amount of variables that we've got going on in this question. So that is the same as 1 plus 5t minus 2 plus 4t and 2 plus 3t. So this is what the vector AB is equal to. So this is a kind of a trick here, just to make out algebra that we have look way neater, because instead of constantly writing mu minus lambda, mu minus lambda, we're just going to save some ink and just replace it with t instead. So this is what the vector AB is. Let's just go through our list of our strategy. We found out the general point on L1. We found the general point on L2. We've now found the vector between them, and we use this trick here. And now I just want to make sure that this vector AB, which I've drawn on my diagram here, what do I want to do with it? Ensure it's perpendicular. I want to in ensure that it's perpendicular to the direction. So because it's perpendicular, I know that AB dotted with the direction of the line is going to be zero. Okay? Because I know that AB and the direction of the line are perpendicular. And they have to be perpendicular for it to be the shortest distance. So I can say that 1 plus 5t minus 2 plus 4t and 2 plus 3t dotted with the direction of the line. What's the direction? Um, 5, 4, 3. 5, 4, 3 is equal to 0. Before we continue with this, are there any questions of what we've done or why we've done it so far? Or just queries, or like, oh, could you just repeat this? This might, this might help me understand it a bit more. OK, so we're just going to now expand this, find out what t is equal to, and we're basically done, OK? So we get expanding 5 plus 25t minus 8 plus 16t plus 6 plus 9t equals 0. So that is 50t, I think. So you get 50t is equal to uh, 3. So t is equal to minus 3 over 50. What are we even trying to find out? Let's go back to this diagram. What are we actually trying to find out here? Distance. The distance between them. What is the distance related to that diagram that I've drawn? Mm -hmm. AB. It's the modulus of AB. So I know that T is now minus 3 over 50. So I can find out what AB is, and then I can take the modulus of it, and I'm hoping that's going to give me 21 root 2 over 10. So... If t is minus 3 over 50, then AB is equal to, let's go back up here, we're going to take this value of t and we're going to put it in. We would have 1 minus 15 over 50, 7 over 10. Um, in fact, yeah, it's going to be all right like this. And then we've got minus 2, minus 12 over 50. Did I do that right? Yes. Pardon? Seven that's 7 over 10, yeah. That's when you do 1 plus 5t. Then you've got minus 2, minus 12 over 50, which is minus 56 over 25. And then we've got 2 plus 3t, which is 2 minus 9 over 50, which is 91 over 50. This may be easier as decimals. 
So we have 0 0.7, 2.24, 0.5, 1.82. So the length AB is the square root of 0 0.7 squared plus 2.24 squared plus 1.82 squared. So let's just hope that works. If it does work, 0 0.7 squared plus 2.24 squared plus 1.82 squared square rooted and you get 21 root 2 over 10. Can I tell you the thing that people always make a mistake with so that you, in the hope that you will hear it and not do it rather than the hope of hearing it and then doing it? Because there's a number of steps that you have to do. People sometimes just go like, oh, great, I've got a general point on L1 and I know, it has to be, I know that something has to be perpendicular. They take this and they go straight down here and they dot it with 543. They forget that you need to find a vector between the two lines before you do the dot product. So if you feel like you've done this question too quickly, it's because you've done it too quickly and you've probably missed out a stage. Yeah, to me. Does the direction vector is the same for the time of right? Yes. They're not, was it like skew lines? Actually, skew lines, we, we would need to, if you have a look at this diagram that we've got here, skew lines are a little bit trickier. We need to make sure that this is the vector that's between the two. We only made sure for this example that it was parallel to one of them, okay? In this case, you would have to make it parallel to one and parallel to the, uh, keep saying parallel, sorry, perpendicular to this one and perpendicular to this one. So you have to do it twice and you'll come up with some simultaneous equations, okay? So I think that's probably what we will go on to in a second. But has everyone got all that written down? Okay, so the strategy is general point, general point, find a vector between them, and a sketch probably helps with this, find the vector between them. We did a little trick to make it a bit simpler for parallel lines by replacing it. We only need to do that for parallel lines. Um, and then we knew that the vector between the lines was perpendicular to the direction of one of the lines. And so we used the fact that um, two vectors dotted are zero if they're perpendicular. Found out what T was. We wanted to find out what the length of AB was, so we put it back into AB, and then we took the magnitude of it to get the answer that they required. Not very easy. Okay, we'll do the two distance, uh, we'll do these, but I'll separate the video.